Hello again and welcome back to day five of the Yeovil Chamber Business Fair. This is our final webinar of the week and we're going out in st style with Sarah Hickling from Your Time Coaching. <laughs> now, Sarah is a business and life coach and she's here to talk to us about how to find time for you and your business. So you need to find time if you're not here listening to us live to watch this at a later date and then maybe take some of her hints and tips and watch some of the other fantastic videos from businesses that have been here throughout the business fair this week. So I will now pass over to Sarah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for the lovely introduction. And thank you for the invitation as well. Um, and I'll explain later how it's actually helped me reach something. So thank you very much. Um, so for people that don't know me, my name is Sarah Hickling and my business is Your Time Coaching. So today I'm going to be talking about time for you and time for your business. So, but before I talk um, about this area, I thought it might be useful to give you a bit of a background about, about me, but also um, why it's important to make time for you and your business. So the agenda today is who am I, why I talk about time, getting your vision in place, getting your values straight, wow and wow. Mindset, top tips, permission, and any questions at the end. So that's what I'm going to be covering today. Before I do that, so who am I? This is me. And this is my dog, Bella. So who I talk about a lot. Um, but just look at her. She's super, super cute. But she's a big part of my journey and somebody who this week um, really tested my emotions when she had some teeth out. So it was a big, big thing, but she's a big part of my life and big part of why I started Your Time Coaching and, and the business that it is. I am the one that does the crazy challenges. So I'm the one that tracks for charity um, for a week camping with altitude sickness to Machu Picchu. Um, but I'm also the one that quite easily jumps out of the plane and I don't do this for charity because actually it's not a problem. It's not something I, I just happily do it every single day. It's absolutely great fun. The one thing I won't do is a bungee jump. And I think it's um, linked to my back. So that's the one thing you won't get me doing. Um, I keep thinking I might do it because it does look amazing, but the whole thing of stretching me out, I know I'm a shorty, so it might help me get a bit taller, but I don't want to do it. And then you all get me talking about chocolate a lot. Um, I love chocolate. But one of the things is when I was younger, I, uh, my dream job was to be chief taster of Cadbury's chocolate. Now, and one of the reasons was partly because I'm from Birmingham. That's my, I don't have the accent, but that's my background. But I still think that there's just that chance that I'm gonna become a chief taster of some sort of chocolate, probably not Cadbury's. Um, but so I'm kind of posting um, and putting it out there because I'm really hoping that one day I will fulfill that dream. But for people that don't know me, my background in the corporate world is Clark. So I was there for 11 years in various roles from um, merchandising to running the stores to store planning to operations, all sorts of things. And then I took some time out to help some charities. I then um, I had a um, kind of a, a moment that I needed to leave. Um, I also worked for a small organisation before I started Your Time Coaching. But also, just to let you know, part of my business going forward is that I will be having counselling as part of my world. I've got a couple of years for this, so I've got starting level four in September, but it does take a couple of years, but it's really supporting my whole business um, and, and how and understanding the differences between counselling and coaching. So I started Your Time Coaching back in 2016, um, where myself and a very good friend decided to feel, feel our dreams of becoming and working for ourselves and helping other people. We knew we loved helping people. In our previous retail careers, we managed and we worked with teams in the UK and globally, um, from operations to merchandising to marketing, whatever the role, we always ended up doing the same things. And that was developing and mentoring team, teams for promotion, connecting colleagues together to enable them to grow and their business to grow and supporting colleagues with work and personal challenges. We didn't do this as part of our job description, but we enjoyed it and found out we we're kind of pretty good at it. So we developed and grew Your Tone Coaching over the years through one-to-one -one coaching, workshops specialising in supporting others through their path, 
and try and make some of the best material out there more accessible for people. We also started um, a, a free networking, net walking group. I always get this one mixed up, net walking group in Sherborne. And that was ultimately about bringing businesses or if you're thinking about starting something to get out there and do it in the fresh air, share those challenges, ideas and connect people together. So your time coaching is really about, um, it's important to be honest, non-judgmental and having that support around you. And that was something that we really wanted to make sure we had in place. So Dawn has since then gone and started to solely focus on her yoga business, which she started at a similar time. And I have really streamlined what I focus on and who I love supporting and I love supporting people. But she will be back, there's no question about it. Um, when her son is older, um, but ultimately, one of the things was that we talked about is getting that work life balance and really understanding that. And we always were really honest from day dot. If this isn't working or if it's not fitting in with our work life balance, if we're finding we're working too much, then we're totally going to stop, review and check in. So why do I talk about time? So when I was in the corporate world, I ran myself into the ground. I hit a brick wall. I was knackered. I was lost. I needed that support, but it just wasn't there. Not how I felt I needed it. I had lots of friends, colleagues, but no one I felt I needed that could give me that help that I needed. I also didn't know where my career was going to go because I was in a role that I'd hit quite a high level and the next step up wasn't necessarily as obvious um, to other, other um, departments. I was in a really paid well job, really, really paid well job but I had to leave. I had to take some steps aside to work out what that is and work on my work-life balance. But what I didn't know at the time was I actually needed somebody like me, a coach that can help you through all the different steps and help you to talk it through. I know circumstances are much, much better in organizations now about having somebody to talk to, but at that time I felt very alone. It wasn't that I didn't enjoy my time at Clark's because I certainly did. I loved it. I made some bestest friends from there. And obviously one of them ended up starting your time coaching with me. But if I had somebody who's like a coach with me that stayed with me for a few years and just sorted me out, then I may have become a coach, but without feeling absolutely shattered whilst doing it. However, I'm a big believer in trusting the journey as you just don't know how things are going to turn out. The reason I'm telling you this is I wanted to show you that getting that work-life balance isn't a case of taking a test or writing it out or it being magic. I love a bit of magic, but it just wasn't magic. I didn't get it right in my 30s, but I'm working on it in my 40s. I'm not saying I've got it nailed, as I do have slip-ups, but I don't beat myself up like I used to when I just wanted an evening off. So how do you get started on getting that work-life balance? Getting your vision in place. And I know many of you guys on this call have done this. And even Brett was talking about it this morning. So I was really excited to see how he has talked about that as part of his whole business plan, because it's really, really important. Before anything, before any business ideas, it's really important to get that vision in place. Many people find that having a vision board sounds a bit woo-woo. And in a way, I kind of did too. I was a bit like, oh, is this just something that, you know, you just do? But actually, it's the process of doing it. It's just as important as the end result. But quite often, you'll find people that do a vision board for their wedding or a dream kitchen or pulling together um, what they want their lounge to look like. But having images are super, super powerful. And when you're out and about, do you notice how you brought that new car and then you're noticing everyone else has got that same car or that same colour pair of trainers? Or even that top that you think, I thought I was the only one that got that top. Funny enough, this is your rectangular activating system working for you. So what happens if you pull all your images together and really thrash it through and really saturate your RAS? what would you think about getting those things coming to life? So pulling together a vision board for your business or your personal life, or both, is a great way to start the process, of going after your dreams, but also working out what's important and starting off kicking off 
getting that time right and that work-life balance right. But also it's really important to share your vision with people, particularly the people that you've really, you know, got similar, similar backgrounds or similar interests, or even your partner or your son, your daughter, whoever, just say, this is what I'm going after, because they will then buy into what you're going after and really support you along the way. So it's really important about where you put that is, put it. So it could be on the fridge, it could be above in your office, anywhere like that. Or even I've known people put it in their diary or even in their car, because that's the place they go into every day. What I wanted to share with you today, actually, is this is my vision board. There's something on this vision board that I have been able to complete, tick off, and that's including today. And that is the stage. So I wanted to do more talks. I wanted to do more webinars. I wanted to do more things like that. Funny enough, I've been able to tick that off and I'm doing it today. That was the power of pulling that vision board together. So I wanted to share that one with you. Getting your values straight. And again, people were like, values, is that a little bit woo-woo? But how many times have you done some things that haven't felt quite right? Or you spent time working on something which isn't working, but you're not sure why? You'll find it'll all come back to your values. If you're really clear about them and know them about your work and your personal life, then in time, in turn, that will save you time. Because what it does, it really irons out some things. So if somebody asks you to do something and it's always going against your value, don't waste your time and say, nope, I'm not doing it. Nope, it's not part of my business value. It's not part of the proposition that I've got in place. Again, you're saving some time. But having that really clear and getting, making sure everyone is engaged in that is really, really important. And don't change it, just somebody else thinks to change it. If it sits with you, it sits with you. So get your value straight because in turn, it saves you time. In time, it saves you time, yeah. <laughs> wow and wow. Probably thinking, what is wow and wow? They are, they, it is. So you've got your vision and you've worked that through. You've got your values. And now it's the case of, okay, so what is eating up my time? What is getting in the way of my time? What are the big chunks of my time that is impacting? How do I plan that? How do I work that one through? Now, a really simple tip, and they're available on the internet, really, really easy, is Wheel of Life. Now, it's a great template of having, sometimes they make them a bit more complicated, so it could have 16 spokes, but I always say start with six. So in the middle is zero, on the outside is 10. And along the spoke, you'll have, say, work, health, family, friends, finance, holidays. And then you want to look at it and go, where am I? How much focus am I putting on? What time is being taken up by those aspects? And then put a dot on the spoke. Once you've done that, you join it all together. And what you're looking for is a nice circle. That's a smooth, nice ride. But hey, life's not like that. And pretty much most of the time, it's not gonna be a smooth ride. However, what it does, it helps you to understand, oh, wait a minute, my health isn't great. That's really impacting. And what it does, it's impacting on something else. I'm gonna spend a bit more time on that. That's where I'm going to look at. Or it could be something that's working really well. And you think this is really helping my other ones. They just need a bit more time. That means you can just really focus on that. So it's a really good um, starting spot. But what I always say is you look, at, you look on your wheel of life, but then you do your wheel of work. So you take one aspect and then spread it out into a whole of the eight. So you just have to put your marketing, your finance, um, product, um, social media, all those different things on there and have a wheel of work. And then do the same exercise again, really, really important. But I had a time where mine looked like this. And this was, I wanna say two, three years ago, where my back went. That's because I wasn't spending time on keeping it okay. And when my back goes, it means everything else goes and it means it then becomes a very bumpy ride. So for me, I looked at it, reviewed it and go, right, how am I going to make time for my back to make sure it enables me not to get the doctor out and be lying down for six hours and not being able to go to the toilet? Really, really rough, really not great. And I don't want anyone to go through that. So it's really important that you work out how smooth a ride is your wheel of life and your wheel of work, because it really helps you. In ultimate, it will help you save some time, 
and work out what's most effective for your time. But I didn't obviously get it right straight away. It's taken, I've had a few more little bumpy rides with my back, but I know it's something that I'm, I'm keeping an eye on and keeping it focused because if my back's not good, I can't do my work. I can't go out for, I can't walk Bella. Um, I can't meet up with friends. And that ultimately then impacts my whole of wheel of life and then becomes a bit of a mishmash. So. Mindset. And I know lovely Brett talked about mindset this morning and I'm really grateful. I'm really pleased that he mentioned it because it's so, so important. If you have a real clear focus and worked on what's impossible, then you'll have time spent doing, doing stuff on the right things and not the wrong things and spending the time because it's the right thing to do and you're positive. So a quote that I always share with everyone and I think it's really important is everyone wants to change the world but no one think, thinks beginning with themselves. You must become the change you want to see in the world. And I think that's really important because if you get that understanding that it comes from you inside, you can't expect other people to change your mindset. It comes from you. I can talk about lots of different people and different activities and challenges that people have faced. But here's just a few that I wanted to run through with you. So this lady is Mary Anning. So I think some of you guys might have seen the film that's been out recently. I believe it's Kate Winslet in it. And obviously being local to Dorset, um, she was here not very far away from me. But did you know she didn't actually go to school? She actually taught herself and discovered the fossils, which obviously proves that dinosaurs existed, which is quite impressive. Everyone knows the Winston Churchill. But um, he actually failed at Eton and was told he's educationally subnormal and wouldn't make a success of it. You then have Steven Spielberg, who is actually dyslexic, an amazing film director. And then you've got Laura Kenny, um, also known as Laura Trott, and she's asthmatic. Would you think that from somebody who's a sports person? You think, oh, can't do that. You're asthmatic. Hasn't stopped her. So you're probably wondering why I've mentioned these four people. I could have mentioned many more, and I'm sure most of you have heard me talk about these guys before. But it, it can be something physical or something that somebody's told you that, oh, I can't do it. I've got asthma. I've got asthma. I can't do it possibly. No, 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 no. They've gone. I've got this situation, but it's not going to stop me. I'm going to turn something negative into a positive and, and actually spend less time worrying about it and just doing it. I know it sounds simple, but hey, it's just really important that you really look at your mindset because if you spend more time going, yeah, I can do it and get cracking on it, but think about all that time you go, oh, I'm not sure. Oh, and then an hour later, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That time is wasted. And you think you start collecting those hours and those hours and those hours. And it's things like people say, I can't, I've got time to go to the gym. And I'm like, so what are you doing between then and then? Oh, I, I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, but not doing anything. So get your mindset right. And you, those things will make it happen and ultimately will help your business and help your career. Um, so it's all about that growth mindset, really focusing on that and not working and not spending time in your fixed mindset. Top tips. So we're coming to the near the end, and I just want to share with you some top tips about um, that I think might be useful, and you can take them away. Um, and hopefully, at the end, we can talk about any others that we can add to it that be beneficial for anybody that's watching this uh, video. Say no, and when I mean say no, it's it's not to be a pain in the bottom. It's saying, well, if you haven't got the time for that particular project, say no, I haven't got the time, and being open and honest from the beginning. Or you have that particular one person that always asks you to do that same favour and you're like, oh, it's really, I, I want, don't want to say no. Say no, because you've got to look after yourself. You really, really do. It sounds quite harsh, but I promise you it will help. Eat your frogs for breakfast. And that is all about eating that big, meaty, might be slightly difficult, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it, but I've got to do it. Or oh, do it for breakfast. I promise you. It will work. The rest of the day will go great. Put your work into 90 minutes chunks. So they have done some scientific um, studies that actually people work really well at 90 minutes. So you do 90 minutes, go for a coffee break, go for a walk. 
and then come back and do another 90 minutes. Seems to work really well, really, really well for people. Set out time limits as well. So put yourself a little buzzer or go, do you know what? I'm going to work on it for that 90 minutes. And if it's not quite working, do it the next day. Don't beat yourself up because in that time you're beating yourself up, again, you're wasting time. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Now, for me, you're very much an early bird. I dip in the afternoon. So I'm really grateful that I've done the just after lunch slot today because later on, oh, a little bit, need a cup of tea and need a sit down. Then I have a bit of a spike later on in the evening. But if you are an early bird, do all your more harder concentrating need to really think stuff and then do the slightly easy stuff in the afternoon and vice versa. If that's how your body clock works, don't fight against it. Use it to, for your advantage. Delegate out. Oh gosh, you've got to do this. So if you've got to do social media every day and you think, oh, I haven't got, do you know what? That time I could be working with a client. Give it to somebody else to do it. Or um, don't do all your financial stuff. Get an accountant. You know, that's what they do. They're the expert. They probably do it twice as fast as you and probably do a better job <laughs> because that's what they're used to doing. So it's really important to delegate out. And when I talk about delegating out, actually, it's not just your work stuff. It's your home stuff. So if you need a cleaner, a window cleaner, all those sorts of things, totally do it. It really supports you. Turn off your emails and phones at a specific time. So we're talking about all those interrupters. So I do it after nine o'clock at night. If anybody calls me, I wouldn't know unless I looked at my phone and it comes back on at seven o'clock in the morning. But also if you're at work and you're, you're looking at emails and you've got that big project to do and that big, you want that 90 minute chunk, turn off your emails. Turn, turn them down, switch them off, turn your phone over so you don't get the notifications, you don't see it. Because once you're doing a job and then suddenly you get interrupted, then you have to spend more time to get back into the flow of it. Again, that doesn't help with time. I always say have three things that you really want to nail that day and celebrate it, obviously, at the end. But go with the top three. It's always about three with me. Really good. And hey, guess what? If you're not good at prioritizing, you're not sure what to do first, get somebody, work with somebody to help you do that. Again, don't, don't beat yourself up if you're not great at prioritizing because you can't be perfect at everything. So get some people to help you with that because why should you do it all on your own? Really, why should you? And also it's great talking to other people as well and going, should I do that first or should I do? What, what's going on? What's best? All oh, right, okay, yeah, you know, work with other people is really good. Check in on your progress. So if you thought this was only going to take you two days, you can go, well, next time you've got that same thing come through, think, do you know what? That took me longer last time. I'm going to give it three days instead of the two days because something means it needs to take all the time. And obviously charge for the three days as well, not forgetting that as well. And breaking down your steps into manageable ones. Don't make it hard on yourself. Really break it down. It's really specific. Really get right down. Really, really important. And then celebrate those little wins. I always big believer. So if you've done your three things, celebrate. That could be, for me, having a slice of cake or eating some chocolate. It could be having that G&T that night. It could be phoning somebody up you haven't spoken to for ages just because they just give you that little bit of a buzz. Whatever it is, celebrate those wins. It's really important. It doesn't matter how small because you want to make yourself feel good, get yourself into that positive mindset, which I've talked about before. Now, we're coming very near the end. I'm giving you permission to, I'm quite pleased actually, I'm the last one of the day because give yourself permission to start the weekend now and finish straight after this webinar. Don't wait till five o'clock or whatever time you normally finish. Start now. Really enjoy the weekend and put that time aside. And that is me. Thank you very much for listening, everybody. Any questions? Thank you very much, Sarah. I do like that last slide about permission to finish straight after this. I could see a lot of people nodding and smiling <laughs> in the room at that point. So um, thank you very much for all of those top tips. It's, as we all know, it's very difficult to balance that time. So I'm sure that a lot of what you've said there is useful, not just to the people in this room, but the people who take time out yeah to watch your video on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So let's let yeah. people take that advice before they need it, as it were, yeah. and, and watch those videos. So exactly. I open up the floor. Are there any questions or comments in the room? Helen. 
First of all, apologies for arriving late, but um, I made absolute copious notes <laughs> from the moment I joined. <laughs> and, and thank you, Sarah, for a um, brilliant presentation as always, and just reminding me of that vision board. Mm. My question is, um, just these top, so I'm sort of working backwards now, the top tips. I really like it when you say, um, break things down, turn off emails, turn off phones, but I need to learn to end the week or end the day. I'm not an early bird and I've tried and I've tried. Yeah. I, I literally don't achieve much before lunchtime, but my orders are sort of time sensitive. So I find that I do cram a lot into my afternoon mm -hmm. after lunch. I mm -hmm. always make a, a, um, a point of stopping for lunch. So how do I address switching off at night because I really struggle with that. So um, there are a few things I do. So look at the things that you're doing in the afternoon, just double check there isn't some of those things that you could fall into the morning because actually they really don't take much brain power mm -hmm. or much energy power. Um, and then um, really looking at some things like doing yoga, uh, meditation, those things, even reading a book that's completely irrelevant to the business that you run. Just have a little look at that, that enables you to work out what it is that actually you can totally switch off or if it's habit watching a film or recently I've been watching a lot of tennis and I'm finding that's just really relaxing just to kind of wind down it's finding that thing that wind down but if to have a look at what you're doing in the afternoon because I bet you there's a couple of things there that could fall into the morning when you don't have to think too much does that right. make sense it does I just keep blaming myself for procrastinating and thinking I've got to get over this but then I achieve it yeah. But I'm think I'm beginning to think at what cost. Mm. You celebrate those achievements at the end of the day, yeah. Helen, or are you still beat? I'm, I'm just knackered, up? Joe. I'm just too knackered <laughs> to celebrate them. And I'm falling asleep at the, at the 10 o'clock news. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we need to have a maybe we need to have a chat, Helen. <laughs> I think we do, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the room? No, and I um, just wanted to say, I, I always learn stuff when I listen to you, Sarah, and some, some of it is um, is just kind of prodding stuff back to the forefront of your brain that mm. you, you've maybe heard before, or you know, but you need to have it restated to kind of force you like your permission statement. So I'm taking you at your word today. Yes. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I think people... I do have another question about the wall and the wow. Yeah. Should we try, and I understand them perfectly, but should we always try to have as smooth a circle as possible or just avoid having ones with jagged edges? I think it's more about avoiding the ones that are the jagged edges because I don't think you're ever going to get a smooth ride because there's always something that gets in the way, like a windscreen needs replacing or the electric isn't working or your phone's off. Or your friend has been in tears because they've had some sad news or something like that. So you're never, ever going to get a perfect circle. So it's really focusing on that one thing that ultimately is impacting the rest of it. So with my back, because of my back going meant that I was on heavy medication just to try and ease, relax it. Mm -hmm. That meant it impacted my work for that following week. And then it was just like a ripple effect. But if I had spent more time really focusing and going, right, I need to get those exercises in. I need to be mindful of it. Um, I need to listen to the early signs, which I wasn't doing. And if I'd done that, I may have still had a bit of a twinge, but not so much that it meant that I had to call the doctor out to my home, which I've never done in my life before. Mm. So yeah, go for those yeah. tweak those ones that are a bit jaggedy. But yeah, also, if you've got a couple of if you've got a couple of jaggedies, just look at which one is the one that's gonna maybe get the quickest fix in a funnier way, because actually, then it just helps it just feel a little bit smoother, and then go to the other one for sure but again sometimes that could be delegating out it could be asking for help and, mm -hmm. and and talking it through with somebody that could just be enough to make it slightly smoother ride thank you you're welcome anyone else got anything they want to ask sarah no they, they want to get going Jay. they want to get going <laughs> on their weekend start the weekend here and finish for the weekend early. they want to start they want to start <laughs> I've, I've done sessions like this with you before and the wheel of life is something I'm very familiar with. The wheel of work is actually something I'm going to spend some time this weekend looking at because 
I think we we lump our work when we do the wheel of life we lump work as one thing don't we exactly and I think I'm going to really take from this my takeaway is if I can look at that wheel of work and work mm -hmm. out how I can be more efficient mm -hmm. at work time efficient energy efficient and so forth see yeah. if there's anything that I'm feeling or falling very falling shorter on than others yeah and that way then I can uh, work out what I need to delegate out because yeah. I think that's another big tip to take out of this as small business owners and micro business owners we find it very difficult in a lot of cases to delegate mm. because this our business our job our work is our baby mm -hmm. and no one's quite going to do it up to the same standard as we are mm -hmm. or so we think and yeah. I think that that's another big tip that I've taken out of that as well yeah and the thing is sometimes when you're focusing on one thing so maybe focusing on marketing just taking that from you Jane you're focusing on that and then and then you kind of get 100 percent. and before you know it, you get sucked into that area and then before you know it, other things are dropping by the side you're doing your financey stuff or whatever and that's starting to fall down and you're kind of like oh but I always say regularly look at a wheel of work and wheel of life is just do it maybe you're like once a month and go right am I on track am I working and then ultimately always come back to that vision board is it really supporting that is that going in the right direction and it could be your vision board could be your wheel of work as well you know and it's just just really helpful to have something like that in place but it's simple really simple. On the two wheels are there set things we should have on those spokes or are they things that we choose um there are some suggestion ones which i which i've got but ultimately it's just personal down to you and what's important to you depends on your business and depends on what's going on in your life so i don't have children so i wouldn't necessarily have i would have i have bella on it so she's on my <laughs> way of life um so for me it's about having what's important to you and what is relevant to you as well so yeah anything anything that's important definitely and and as say there's eight spokes that's like the simple version but you could break that down into like a 16 spoke which i think some people really struggle to get eight things on there so i would just start with that one first okay thank you very much sarah no you're welcome you're welcome um i think everyone will agree that this has been a very timely end last session of the business yeah. fair um, <laughs> for more reasons than the very obvious pun on the title there <laughs> And I'd like to say a really big thank you to you, Sarah, no, for thank um, you. coming along and doing that. I think it's the perfect rounding up of everything, the culmination of all the learning that we've taken from all the experts throughout the week. And I know a lot of those experts are in the room and people are coming to each other's webinars, which is really fantastic as well. So I'm going to take this opportunity not just to thank you, but mm -hmm. to thank everybody who's taken part in the, the um, business fair, either to present, to sponsor or to attend and to make this hopefully a very successful week mm. all of the videos we have nearly 100 videos now on the youtube channel which wow. is absolutely amazing so please take some time see what i did there <laughs> and go and watch some of the videos from the other experts and from other companies around the town mm. and around this whole region of south somerset north dorset a bit into wiltshire and so forth and let's you know do what this business fair is all about and that's rebuild a, a business community together Definitely. so thank you all very much for all your input for attending for participating and um we'll see you next year As and thank you that. joe <laughs> thank you, you joe. must have had so much screen time this week so thank you so much for putting this on and inviting me and thank you all for all your wonderful presentations thank, thank you me. helen